I'd like to provide an introduction to a thought project I've been working on called Theological Philosophy. Theological Philosophy is basically an intervention in debates about the rationality of Christian faith. Of course, these debates have exercised philosophers of religion and theologians and even lay people for a very long time. It's not entirely clear whether the debates have been conclusively resolved, although of course many great strides have been made towards their resolution in various traditions of thinking. I don't want to go into those so much today. I want to frame the type of project that theological philosophy is with reference to a distinction between two different ways of approaching the defense of the Christian faith, or as it were, the apologetic task. One way is to go on the defensive, as it were, for the Christian faith. To try and respond to objections that have been posed by outsiders, or those who don't believe, on various grounds, for example, philosophical, uh, moral, scientific, and so on. And this is perhaps the strategy that's taken most frequently by specialists seeking to defend the rationality of faith. Well, another approach might say, goes on the offensive for Christian faith. In other words, it tries to give an account of faith which preempts any objections and provides a sort of foundation for defensive approaches to apologetics. It seems to me that this way of doing apologetics is somewhat less common in this day and age. And it's to this offensive, <laughs> without being offensive, apologetic project that I seek to contribute with theological philosophy. And I do this by actually trying to redefine rationality itself in a way that implicitly underlines the rationality of faith or anticipates the rationality of faith, where it seems that many prevailing definitions of rationality still call the rationality of faith into question. So in trying to redefine rationality, it's very important for the argument of theological philosophy to show that rationality is not merely an epistemological question concerning the objectivity or soundness of human reasoning. It's ultimately an ethical or a moral question whether knowledge is used in ways that are consistent with the reason for being or ends of a rational animal, that is to contribute to the flourishing of individual human beings and through them to contribute to the flourishing of others, to communities. This moral definition of ration rationality, I will hope to show, ultimately provides a very effective foundation for establishing the rationality of faith. Before I go into the details of how this works out in practice, I'd like to say just a couple words about the sources that I use in theological philosophy. My main source is probably the work of Thomas Aquinas and especially his Summa Theologiae. The reason I find Aquinas useful for the present project is that he has definitions of reason and faith, it seems, and even philosophy and theology, which don't seem even to give rise to the question whether faith is rational, at least to the question in its modern form, where there's a considerable skepticism about the possibility of proving that faith is rational. The very fact that Aquinas' categories don't give rise to the question it seems to me makes them his way of thinking about faith and reason potentially useful for those of us who do face this challenge today. Of course, because Aquinas articulated his views on faith and reason in a very different context, it's for that very reason that it doesn't do simply to reiterate his views on faith and reason. So while I draw heavily on his work, there are also cases in which I leave aspects of his thought behind or try and situate his ideas within a larger framework, which is admittedly not his own. Thus, I don't attribute this to Aquinas. I don't say that theological philosophy is an interpretation of Aquinas, but it's an attempt to draw on principles that he articulated insofar 
is they're still relevant to a question which is highly significant in the present context. So I've already suggested that this project, Theological Philosophy, falls into two distinct parts. The first part is focused on redefining rationality, ultimately in moral terms. And the second part involves showing how Christian faith or beliefs, theological beliefs about God provide an explanation or account or rationale for rationality, such that faith is intrinsically rational. In developing this first part of the project, I would note that that project actually involves three steps of its own. I want to outline those briefly. The first step involves an argument about the arguably the most fundamental area of philosophical inquiry, and that is ontology or the nature of reality and what there is. In describing the nature of things, uh, my basic argument is for an ontology in which things are subject to development. Now that seems like an obvious claim to make. What's at the background of my thinking here is Aquinas's metaphysics of participation in which beings gradually actualize an essence or a nature or potential that is given to them by God through engaging in different modes of activity that are proper to whatever kind of being that they are. So as a human being, I uh, seek knowledge, I seek to develop my abilities in different ways, and that involves the actualization of my potential, uh, the realization of my essence through my mode of existence, uh, and participation in that mode of existence. Ultimately, this results in a life that's subject to development. Well. On the basis of this ontology, I go on to think about the theory of knowledge and suggest that, like all things, knowledge is subject to development. And in describing the process of development, I follow Aquinas in appealing to three stages of development in knowledge, um, which I describe in terms of expectant, fulfilled, and informed faith. Now, the faith I have in mind here isn't a specifically religious faith, but faith of a more generic sort that indicates the fact that we don't start out knowing whatever we want to know whenever we decide that we want to know it, but instead we simply have a desire for knowledge and a belief that it can possibly be found, a faith as it were that motivates us to pursue knowledge until we find it. And that's what expectant faith is all about. It's the phase at which we develop a question. And as a result of that question, go out in search of understanding. A fulfilled faith is where we actually obtain that understanding. An informed faith, I would argue, is where we use the understanding that we achieve in fulfilled faith to develop further questions and pursue more knowledge, such that the search for knowledge is interminable and knowledge never ceases to be a matter of faith. Clearly, if knowledge is subject, like all things, to development, we can't meet a standard of objectivity or rationality, as it were, that conforms to many modern standards of rationality, where somehow we can acquire ideas that are true universally across the board for all people, at all places, and at all times. So the next step in theological philosophy is to try and explain how knowledge that is subject to development in this way is rational in, on its own terms. In this connection, I find very useful Aquinas' account of the way that the will collaborates with the intellect at every single phase in the knowing process. So in expectant faith, for example, it's the will that alerts us to the fact that we want to know something, but that we don't know what we want to know. And it's the will that motivates us to pursue understanding and not to settle until we really obtain the understanding that we're looking for. Finally, it's the will that leads us to realize in fulfilled faith when we have found what we were looking for. And it's the will that motivates us to further apply our knowledge rather than 
neglecting it and abandoning any further tasks of knowing. So it's basically the will working together with the intellect at all these phases that keeps the intellect honest, as it were, in the pursuit of truth and ensures that even though we're not able to capture ideas that are true for all people at all places and all times, we do the best we can with the available information without glossing over relevant information, settling too soon on an answer that isn't quite sufficient, for example. Aquinas doesn't leave his discussion of rationality at the intellect and the will. He appeals to the passions, which are roughly, albeit not entirely analogous, to what we would now call emotions. The passions are basically the means through which we make contact with reality and form judgments about the objects of our experience. So, in other words, the passions register the potentially helpful or unhelpful or even inimical nature of the things we know when it comes to the purpose of the intellect and will to pursue the truth. They account for the embodied nature of our knowing and the way in which our knowledge of reality and our desires to know about reality ultimately keep us in tune with the world that's actually there. Of course, given the room for deliberation that is there in the process of the will guiding the intellect to understand or give the best possible account of whatever question or issue is under consideration, there is room for the passions to lead us somewhat astray. So for example, a pa an object of passion, an idea or an agenda, uh, an intellectual program about, on which, about which a person is particularly passionate can become the primary object of concern rather than the pursuit of truth. And as a result, the truth can be reduced to the promotion and pursuit of this particular ideology or agenda which may concern a given individual.